Hello, welcome to the sixth lecture of two phase flow and heat transfer. Today, we will be dealing with dispersed flow models. So, at the end of this lecture, you will be knowing the applicability of dispersed flow models in gas liquid two phase flow. We will be also understanding force balance across a bubble. We will be calculating the terminal velocity of the bubble. We will be finding out velocity based diameter in the slug regime, bubbly flow slug regime. And finally, we will be finding out statistically how bubbly flow can be evaluated in terms of the volume and number density ratio. So, let us discuss what is dispersed flow. So, here dispersed flow means we have not kept our periphery limited into the bubbly flow regime. What we can do if we are having dispersion of gas in the liquid that we will be calling as bubbly flow. On the other hand, if you are having dispersion of liquid droplets in gas, we will be calling that one as droplet flow. So, both the both the conditions can be tackled using dispersed flow model whatever I will be dealing now. Though I will be uh, stressing only on the terminal velocity of the bubble, but in a similar fashion terminal velocity of a droplet can be found out and similar type of analysis can be done for droplet flow. Here I have shown you that bubbles will be commonly observed in bubble column reactor and flow inside a tube where bubbly flow is very common. For droplet we have seen in case of atomization in spray we will be finding out that droplet flow is present. So, necessary condition for dispersed flow is that obviously void fraction will be very small. The terminal void fraction or limiting void fraction is less than 0.3. So, if you are having void fraction less than 0.3, we will be calling that one as dispersed flow and we can apply dispersed flow model for its analysis. So, we will start with derivation of the motion of a single bubble. So, here we have taken motion of a single bubble in unconstrained domain. Unconstrained domain means you have a very big pool and the effect of wall is not coming into picture whenever the bubble is moving up. So, in that situation we will be finding out that here mass of the bubble we have signified as m b the acceleration of the bubble is d u d t. So, essentially bubble velocity is u that we can find out from the force balance across the bubble. Here we have taken mainly three forces though apart from these other forces will be also coming into picture. We have taken first the drag force whenever the bubble is moving in the upward side obviously drag will be in the downward side. So, we have taken minus f d b symbolizes bubble. We are having pressure force over here A B P. So, you are if you are having pressure driven flow, so some pressure forces will be also applicable on the bubble. Obviously, whenever bubble is moving up, the major cause of upward movement will be buoyancy. So, F B buoyancy will be over there. Okay. So, let us see all these things individually. So, here I have shown drag force is negative and pressure force and body or buoyancy force will be actually positive. Both the things will be positive. Positive means it will be aligned with same direction of u and drag force will be negating that one or in the opposite direction. Now, if we talk about steady flow of the bubble, let us consider that the bubble is moving up at a, at a constant rate. So, in that case we can find out there is no acceleration. So, you will be finding out this side is becoming 0, left hand side is becoming 0 and we will be finding out drag force is equals to pressure force plus body force. Right? Now, let us consider further simpler assumptions. So, let us consider that we are having negligible pressure field. So, as it is unconstrained bubble, so we are having a big pool where uh, only due to the body force the bubble is moving up and it is experiencing the drag force. In that case we can consider that we are having negligible pressure field and we can cancel this first term in the right hand side and we can write down F 
B D is equals to a B body. So, that means body force is equivalent to your drag force. So, let us see what are the uh, expressions for both this body force and drag force. So, if you consider about drag force, you see C D into half, C D is the drag coefficient, half rho g v t square into A. So, this v t is nothing but terminal velocity of the bubble and rho g is the gas density. right? On the other hand side, if you talk about the uh, buoyancy force or body force, this will be pi by 6 d cube where d is the diameter of the bubble, rho f minus rho g. So, that much amount of body force it will be experiencing due to the density difference of the liquid and gas. So, rho f is density of liquid, rho g is density of gas multiplied by acceleration, uh, gravi gravitational acceleration. So, if we equate this to from here, we can find out what is the terminal velocity. So, terminal velocity v t comes out to be root over of 4 g d by 3 c d into rho f minus rho g by rho g. Right? Now, if we think about uh, very very small velocity of the bubble that means the bubble is moving very slowly in the upward direction that can be taken uh, as equivalent to creeping flow. So, in case of creeping flow we know that C d or drag coefficient can be written as 24 by R e. This comes from the balance of viscous force and your uh, drag force. So, if you if you equate the viscous force and drag force, you will be finding out that necessary condition comes out as uh, uh, C d which is nothing but 24 by R e. So, once we put this value of C d over here, then we will be finding out that uh, uh, the terminal velocity comes out to be g d square by 18 mu into rho f minus rho g. Right? So, here you see in this condition we have in this condition or in the previous equation where we have shown the single bubble motion, we have never considered internal dynamics of the gaseous mass. That means, we have considered that the bubble is perfectly spherical gas mass and there is no internal dynamics of the gas. Right? So, without considering any internal dynamics, we have found out that terminal velocity is g d square by 18 mu into rho f minus rho g. Right? So, it is uh, specifically dependent on the gravitational acceleration, diameter is a major factor over here and viscosity of the fluid will be opposing this one. So, that means, if you are having high viscous fluid, so terminal velocity will be lessening down. Okay. Next, let us see if we consider internal dynamics of the bubble. So, what we will be finding out that whenever we are considering internal dynamics, so inside the bubble whenever it is moving up, we will be finding out lots of vortices are generated in the gas. Now, to tackle that one and to find out what is the what is the expression for terminal velocity, probably we need to go for computational fluid dynamics or some sort of analytical uh, correlations. Similar correlation has been given uh, by people. So, uh, here we will be showing you one correlation given by Wallis. So, you see what he has done with the uh, terminal velocity whatever we have obtained in the previous one. So, he has obtained over here that we are having a multiplier 3 mu g plus 3 mu f divided by 3 mu g plus 2 mu f. Right? So, this multiplier he has given just to uh, accommodate the uh, internal dynamics of the bubble. So, we have found out uh, what is the terminal velocity u infinity or u t whatever you call uh, uh, for a bubble spherical bubble in unconstrained domain. Now, if uh, uh, let us say in this expression, if uh, gaseous phase uh, viscosity is far lower than the liquid phase viscosity that means mu g is less less than mu f. Then in that condition you will find out that uh, this whole expression turns out to be d square g rho f minus rho g by 12 mu f. Okay. Now, here uh, we have considered that the bubble is actually spherical mass. Now, spherical mass uh, of uh, bubble uh, or gaseous bubble will be only staying in the pool 
or inside the pipeline whenever the size is very small. So, actually this is for a small diameter bubble, okay. so terminal velocity for a small diameter bubble. If we try to plot uh, a, a, a curve in between the terminal velocity and the bubble radius, we will be finding out that this expression is valid for a very small diameter. So, we can say somewhere over here this expression is valid. So, that means uh, this expression can be written somewhere over here in region A. Okay. So, whenever the bubble grows in size, we will find out that spherical nature is not keeping constant, you will be finding out the shape is changing. Okay. The extreme shape, we know that it will be a Taylor bubble. So, Taylor bubble already we have seen in case of uh, the flow regime description, we have shown that it will be a bullet shaped very long bubble, okay, where uh, the frontal side is actually blunt and at the ends uh, at the lower side, you will be finding out that lots of vortices are generating satellite bubbles. Okay. So, uh, the extreme end of this uh, single bubble is the Taylor bubble and uh, the lowest end is actually a spherical bubble. Right. So, if you see the velocity of the Taylor bubble, so we will be finding out velocity of Taylor bubble is actually dependent on only the pipe diameter. So, we can write down u infinity is equals to root over of g r d. Okay. So, this has been given by Wallis. So, we will be finding out that uh, this is only dependent on the pipe diameter not on the bubble diameter. Right. So, here this Taylor bubble regime is somewhere over here which is the largest size of the bubble and here this is the smallest size for which we have found out the terminal velocity in this fashion u infinity is equals to d square g into rho f minus rho g by 12 mu f. Okay. Now, we will be having uh, multiple things in between. For example, here you see in between A and E, we are having few more regimes. Okay. If we try to plot the velocity with respect to the uh, radius of the bubble, we are having few more regimes like B, C and D. Now, I will show you that uh, what will be the configuration or velocity for those bubbles. Here you see, I have given a Taylor bubble shape where R c is the critical radius of the nose shape over here for the Taylor bubble and this can be sometime used as critical uh, diameter for the Taylor bubble and uh, predict uh, velocity can be predicted based on that also. Okay. Now, for the rest domains that means B, C and D, these are the transitions from the spherical bubble to your Taylor bubble. So, uh, velocity finding uh, is once again empirical in this case. So, Pebbles and Garber, uh, he, they have given in 1953 some correlations for finding out the velocity in these domains. Okay. So, for first one, let us say this B. So, this B region is actually more near to the spherical region though that is not spherical. You can say that is spheroidal bubble. So, in this domain you will be finding out velocity u infinity is equals to 0 0.33 g to the power 0 0.76 rho f by mu f to the power 0 0.52 into R b to the power 1.28. Right. Now, this REB is the Reynolds number, this is only valid whenever it is in between 2 and 4.02 into G1 to the power minus 214. Right. What is this G? G is nothing but once again calculated from the uh, liquid viscosity and the surface tension G mu f to the power 4 divided by rho f into sigma which is the surface tension between the gas and liquid to the power cube. Right. So, if uh, this uh, condition for the bubble Reynolds number is uh, applicable, then only we will be finding out the terminal velocity using this one. In a similar fashion for the regime C, which is uh, farther elongated bubble, not a Taylor bubble, but uh, high, highly deviated from a spherical one, you will be finding out the terminal velocity is 1.35 into sigma by rho f into R b to the power 0 0.5, where R b is the bubble radius. So, for this also we have the zone of applicability. So, you can find out G2 should be in between 16.32 into G1 to the power 0.144 and it will be less than obviously 5.75. Now, what is this G2? Once again it is dependent on the uh, surface tension and physical properties. So, G2 is G R B to the power 4 u infinity to the power 4 rho f cube by sigma cube. right? And for the last one which is very near to the Taylor bubble domain, okay, so they here I will be finding out that u infinity is 1.18 g sigma by rho f to the power 0 0.25. Okay. Important thing here you see in this domain also the velocity is not dependent on the bubble diameter. 
right. So, the applicability for do this domain is this one. So, REB uh, uh, Reynolds number for the bubble should be actually greater than 3.1 into G1 to the power minus 25, where G1 I have already defined in this place. Okay. Now, let us see when what happens if you are having bubbly flow inside a tube. So, already we have seen uh, that in case of uh, bubbly flow, uh, JGF uh, which is the drift uh, flux will be alpha into 1 minus alpha to the power n into u infinity. Now, this u infinity is once again freely rising terminal velocity and alpha into 1 minus alpha that comes as uh, uh, that comes as actually prefactor. Already we have seen GFG is equals to alpha into into 1 minus alpha into ufg here this uh, ufg is nothing but u infinity into 1 minus alpha to the power n minus 1 so if you club this two you will be finding out this expression so this has been proposed by wallis okay he has also proposed further for air water flow uh, with large bubbles which is actually the region d over here this one very large bubble so you will be finding out jgf is equals to 1.53 alpha into 1 minus alpha square rho f to the power minus half into sigma into g rho f minus rho g to the power 1 by 4 Okay. Now, this is uh, for air water gas liquid, if we go for liquid liquid only the factor 1.53 will be changing to 1.18. right? Okay. Now, as we are talking about bubbly flow, we will be having a cluster of bubbles. So, not only the velocity and drift flux will be important, we need to also find out that what is the number distribution or volume distribution of the bubbles inside the domain. right? So, uh, to know the number distribution inside the bubbly flow for different sized bubbles, what we have to do? We have to go for size distribution in the cross section of the tube. Okay. Now, to tackle the size distribution in a proper way, we have to see the bubble dynamics. So, what bubbles are doing? Bubbles can collide amongst themselves and break into further smaller sizes and during collision what it can do? It can merge with some, uh, uh, some other bubble and form a bigger bubble due to coalescence. It can also nucleate. Uh, from a uh, uh, from a surface during phase change basically it can also growth or shrinkage if you have uh, a heat transfer inside this okay so all this uh, phenomenon it can do breakage coalescence nucleation growth shrinkage due to this you will be finding out number density is being changed okay so size distribution and number distribution we have to take care of so, let us see first how size distribution varies. So, uh, if you try to see in a typical bubble population based on the diameter how number distribution varies, we have to go, uh, uh, we have to take some distribution and typically we take normal distribution. So, if you see the curve of the number distribution, you will be finding out the curve is like this. So, for the intermediate domain, you will be finding out a large number of bubbles. That means, intermediate size will be getting more in number. Right. So, we can we can uh, replicate this one as normal distribution. So, normal distribution one can write as uh, d and d d. So, this d is the diameter, this n is the number is equals to 1 by root over of 2 pi s n, where s n is the standard deviation from the arithmetic mean e to the power minus 1 by 2 s n square into d minus d 10 whole square. Now, this, this d 10 is the arithmetic mean of the bubble diameters. Right. Now, in this same figure, I have shown you the volume distribution also. So, obviously, we know as number distribution uh, is giving you only the number count, volume distribution will be actually shifting towards right. Okay. So, here this is the number distribution. So, if you uh, because volume is actually to the power cube, so uh, length square length to the power cube. So, you will be finding out the curve will be shifting this side. So, we get this curve of dv dd with respect to d. So, uh, let us see uh, if we are having some other options for the number dis density uh, distribution. So, already we have shown you the normal distribution. Here, I am going to show you the log normal distribution. This is also being applied for multiple cases. So, you can find out d and dd is equals to 1 by root over of 2 pi SGM. So, SGM is the standard deviation from the geometric mean. In the previous case, that was from the arithmetic mean. This is from the geometric mean into d into e to the power minus 1 by 2 into SGM square into ln d minus of ln d n g. Now, this d n g is nothing but geometrical mean diameter. Earlier, in case of normal, we have taken d 10, which was the arithmetic mean. 
right. So, uh, uh, this also we can use log normal distribution. I have already told about volumetric distribution. So, dv dd is equals to 1 by root over of 2 pi sgm d e to the power minus 1 by 2 sgm square into ln d minus ln d vg square. Now, this d vg is nothing but geometric volume mean diameter. So, earlier I have shown you dng this is geometric mean diameter based on the number count. Here it is geometric volume mean diameter. So, if you just play with this uh, parameters SGM, uh, DVG and uh, DNG, you can show this expression ln DVG equals to ln DNG plus 3 into SGM whole square. This is coming from mathematics. Okay. Now, uh, for bu bubble mass, it is very important to know what is the mean diameter. So, what we do, there are several ways for defining mean diameter. If we generalize that, we can write down that mean diameter DQP is equals to d mean to d max this is this d mean is the minimum size of the bubble available in the population and d max is the maximum one so this integration will be doing from d mean to d max and the integration will be d to the power q nd so nd is the number count for dh size of the bubble into dd so this second d is for the diameter and first d is for the derivative and then uh, d mean to d max once again integration d to the power p n d d d ok. So, this p and q is uh, as power over here. So, uh, as a result this is d q p right. So, several possible values can be there for p and q. So, for example, 0 and 1 if we take that will be over here if p is 0 q is 1 that will be linear average. If we take 0 and 2 that is surface average. If we take 0 and 3 that is volume average. If we take 1 and 2 that is surface area length average. So, that means if I take 1 over here. So, d n d d d and d square n d t d that is surface area length average. If we go for 1 and 3 that means d cube n d d d and d n d d d. So, that is actually volume length average. And finally, the most important is Soiter diameter which is nothing but p equals to 2 and d equals to 3. So, I have shown you over here what is Schroeter diameter. This, this basically we use for our bubbly flow uh, uh, calculations. So, Schroeter diameter can be written as d mean to d max d cube n d d d and d mean to d max d square n d d d right. Let us practice a sum. So, uh, what we will be considering that we are having a population of 10 spherical particles of diameter 2, 1.5, 1.5, 2, 1, 2.5, 3, 2, 1.5, 1.5. So, 10 diameters are there. Uh, uh, and it is mentioned that the particle size distribution follows log normal distribution. So, the expression for log normal distribution is this one, where uh, sigma naught square is uh, uh, can be found out in this way log d1 minus d naught whole square. And then we can put a summation for all the particle diameters divided by m number of particles and d naught. Uh, can be found as uh, log d1 summation of log d1 by m ok. So, we have to find out the probability of getting 2 millimeter diameter particle in the random selection and we have to also find out what will be the change in probability value if it changes from norm changes into normal distribution from this log normal distribution normal distribution is also given over here. Let us see how this sum can be uh, solved. So, first this d naught. So, you can find out using this expression I will be calculating the d naught value. In a similar fashion let me calculate sigma naught square using this expression. Now, once I put this d naught and sigma naught square in f z ok. So, f z is nothing but uh, this expression if I put over here. Here uh, important thing is that this d I will be putting the uh, uh, whatever diameter I want to get which is 2 millimeter right. So, this is coming out from the log normal distribution. Same calculation I will be repeating for normal distribution. Here I will be finding out d bar which is the arithmetic mean. So, it, it will be coming out to be 1.95. I will be calculating the sigma square uh, uh, for the arithmetic uh, mean ways. So, that is actually deviation from d bar. Uh, and whole square of that one. So, that will be coming out as uh, 0.4717. Uh, so, if I use the uh, normal distribution, then I will be getting this f z comes out to be 0.8348. So, from log normal 0.532, it is transforming into normal 0.8348 for getting 2 millimeter diameter particle. Now, to summarize in this lecture, what we have done? We have evaluated the terminal velocity of a bubble and modified that based on internal circulation of the gas. We have mentioned correlations for bubble diameter prediction 
starting from small spherical bubble to uh, larger Taylor bubble regime. We have also uh, proposed a statistical way to track the number density and volumetric density and at the end we have practiced a sum, right. So, at the end of this lecture, let us test your understanding. Uh, we are having three questions over here. The first question goes like this. If a student claims that in his experiment, an air bubble of 10 centimeter cube volume moves faster in 20 millimeter diameter tube than 10 millimeter diameter, you have to assess whether he is claiming correct or not. We are having three answers over here, true, false and no conclusion without information of fluid property. Here you see the correct answer obviously will be true because you see you will be finding out here that volume is over here uh, the tube diameter is 20 millimeter and here tube diameter is 10 millimeter. So, obviously his claim will be true. In the next question we are having terminal velocity of bubble is obtained by balance of lift force and body force, lift force and drag force, drag force and body force and finally pressure and lift force. So, the correct answer you know will be drag force and body force. In expression of mean diameter dqp, values of p and q for soiter diameters are four options we are having 2 and 3, 3 and 2, 3 and 1 and finally 1 and 3. The correct answer is 2 and 3, okay. Hope you have enjoyed this lecture. Thank you.